in this particular uh, session i'm going to tell you what exactly is sql what is the importance of sql and this is almost like a, a quick introduction to sql for example you have ordered an item on an e-commerce website let us suppose there is a customer who has ordered an item let's say us polo uh, this particular t-shirt has been ordered by a customer and the customer will receive this invoice have you seen this kind of order id or the order invoice has been sent to you over the mail whenever you order something from an e-commerce website in that there is a lot of information like this is mentioned and the t-shirt whatever is the item name whatever is the price whatever is the taxes whatever are the taxes and whatever is the grand total now if you look at this particular order invoice carefully there are several pieces of information here do you have the seller data over here and that seller data will keep on changing based on the item that we are uh, ordering and based on the seller that a particular person is selling and we can also observe the customer related information we can see the customer name customer address and then uh, customer phone number it is uh, kind of hidden over here all the details of the customers built to ship to customer details are also mentioned on this apart from this we have order specific data what exactly this order consists of that means is it about a mobile phone is it about a t-shirt that kind of order data is also given along with the order id and then we have the product data within this order like this sometimes we have the order id and then within that there are multiple products that we are ordering so the product data is also given to us in the same thing and then payment data are you paying online are you paying offline is it paid already is it like uh, cash on delivery that information payment information is also given here now if you look at this in fact there are several other details what is the order date what is the invoice date what are the total number of items like that there are several pieces of information mentioned here now tell me one thing if you go to Amazon or if you go to Flipkart, is this the only product that they are selling or there are thousands and thousands of products that they are selling? They will be selling definitely thousands and thousands of products without any doubt. Is this the only customer that they are selling to? Millions and millions of customers will be there. Their data, I have to store it somewhere. Product data, I have to store it somewhere. Thousands and thousands of products we are selling and thousands and thousands of products will be keeping on adding. Now payment methods. Is that the only payment method? There is UPI payment method. There is credit card payment method. There is cash on delivery payment method. Within UPI, there are multiple UPI, phone pay, Google pay, etc. Within credit card, you have multiple credit cards. Have you also seen there are multiple payment methods? Within payments, there are N number of payment methods. Seller data, is this the only seller? Or do you think thousands and thousands of sellers will be there who are selling on Amazon? N number of sellers will be there. N number of brands, N number of products will be sold. So, what I'm trying to tell you is there is a lot of data which is interconnected that need to be saved in a structured manner. So there are thousands of products data. There are thousands and thousands or maybe millions of customers and their details. They need to be stored securely, safely somewhere. There are multiple payments methods. There are thousands and thousands of sellers. Their data need to be stored somewhere. There are multiple delivery methods. That data information need to be like, you may want to deliver it on the next day, same day delivery, two day delivery, one week delivery, like all the delivery related information. Who is the delivery partner? Where is the parcel? All that tracking information, you want to store it somewhere. Tell me one thing, can I store all that data in a single table like this? The whole of this data, all the customers, all the products, all the payments, all the sellers. Is it a good idea to store it in a single table? Do you think we should store it in a single table? Does it make sense? No. So sometimes no. we have to think beyond a single table. There is no way you can store all of this data in a single table. You need slightly beyond, you need slightly bigger or slightly complex than a single table. That is known as a database. So that is the birth of database. So what is a database? In simple words, database is an organized collection of data. A database contains multiple tables. Multiple tables and queries. I'm going to tell you what are queries, schemas, views. So basically, a database contains a lot of information, which is interconnected information. If a customer is ordering a product, I will go to customer table, get the information about the customer. I will go to products table, get the information of that product. I will go to seller's table, get the information of that seller. I'll give the customer ID, I'll get the customer information. I'll give the product ID, I'll get the product information. I'll give the seller ID, I'll get the seller information. So that I can prepare that order information, the invoice that I have sent to this customer. I get all this data from the seller's table. I get this data from the customer table. Thousands of customers, I will get one customer information. I get this data from the products table. Like that, a uh, database contains all these tables. Typical examples of database. This is one of the e-commerce database. 
So the icon that you see here, you can see that as a table. So we have the orders table here, orders data set. We have the products data set. We have the payments information stored somewhere. We have customer information stored somewhere. Using customer ID, you can fetch the customer information. You have geolocation information stored somewhere using zip code prefix. We can get that information. We have seller information stored in a table. By using seller ID, we can fetch that information. We are going to see details of all these one by one, one by one. Right now, I'm trying to tell you the only point that I'm trying to drive here is we need a complex database or we need a complex system where we can save hell lot of data in an organized manner. So sometimes you have customers table in that customer ID, customer name, customer address, website, credit limit, all those details are given. You have orders table with all the order details in that. You have employees table with all the employee details in that. If you take a bank database, you have officers table, you have branch related information stored somewhere. You have uh, account transaction related information stored somewhere. Only few people should get access to this. A specific set of people should get access to employees table, products table, department wise information, account related information, customer related information, all of that is organized in different different tables. During the course of SQL, we are going to get into all these databases and we are going to see the details of this, how these two tables are attached, how we can extract the information from here. If you take another database called employee database, in this employee database, we have a table with the department information in it. We have another table with employee information in it, salaries information in it, another table titles, department manager. So these are different, different tables. So how do you interact with this database? Database is a collection of very much streamlined organized data. Now, if I want to fetch some information, let us suppose I want to know how many employees are there who are having salary a particular greater than a particular amount. How many employees are there who are male? How many employees are there who are female? How many employees are there based on the hire date? I want to find out how many employees have been hired in the last two years. How do you interact with this database so that you can fetch the information so that you can do some analysis on it? Your client has asked you a question saying that how many employees are there who are from a particular department? Right now, currently, how many employees are there? This is a huge company employee database. Imagine a multinational company like IBM. Now, this will be a very huge database. And I want to know in a particular department currently, how many employees are actually there drawing salary? Or how many employees are there who are drawing salary more than $1 million? So how do you interact with the database? How do you answer these kind of questions? How do you add new tables or new data values in these tables? How do you add new rows into these tables? How do you modify the data? How do you fetch the answer to the questions that I have asked earlier. How do you get the information from this database? For that, you need a language called SQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. You need something called Structured Query Language to interact with a database. It is like a language. In English, if I ask you a question, can you answer this question? When is your date of birth? And quickly you will answer that. Now that is the language, which is English. You understand my question and you give me the answer. Similarly, the language that we talk to a database is Structured Query Language. So that consists of several pieces of code, several pieces of commands. If you give those commands, then you will get the answers. Structured query language stands for SQL. Usually people generally don't call structured query language. You don't hear that uh, detail form. People usually say SQL, SQL. SQL is one of the most important skill set a data scientist must have. Companies will love to hire people who are having SQL skill set because at the end of the day, the whole data is stored in databases like this. And as a data scientist, you are supposed to interact with that database and fetch the information. Then you will go to the analysis. So before getting into analysis, you need to know how to interact with the database. You need to know how to get the data from this database. So structured query language, SQL, is a language that is used for interacting with the database. And what is a database? It is a collection of multiple tables of information which is organized in a particular manner. SQL is a programming language that will help you to interacting with databases. And let me tell you one good news here. SQL is damn easy to learn. SQL is not like other coding or programming languages. SQL hardly consists of 100 commands. Hardly you need to learn 100 commands only. Not more than that. But with 100 commands, you can do hell lot of stuff. So SQL is one of the low hanging fruit. Nobody should ignore SQL. Maybe initially, if you're feeling this is difficult, little difficult to learn, maybe just give an extra weekend effort that is sufficient. You can master SQL or you can get started with SQL very quickly and very easily. This is one of the easiest language. When they're creating SQL, they felt like we have to make it very near to the human language. The English communication that we use, SQL is very near to that. SQL is very easy to learn. If you ask me one programming language that I can learn very quickly within four days or something, if I put all, let's say every day, if I'm uh, investing around 12 hours within four days, can I master a particular programming language? That will be SQL. 
SQL is one of the easiest one to learn. You will also realize that very soon. So let us get details into this SQL. For you to work on SQL, do you need a software? That means do we need to install a software internally on our system? Yes, that software name is DBMS, Database Management System. So you need to install a software for you to work on SQL. So this database management system software, there are different type of softwares. Some of them are enterprise softwares. That means these are all paid versions. Some of them are open source. These are free versions. Now, during the course, you have to practice on these uh, paid versions. The one that we will be using is MS SQL. MS stands for Microsoft. Microsoft SQL is one of the most widely used SQL DBMS software where a lot of companies use it. If you ask me what is the second one, I would say Oracle SQL also the software that people use it. Whether you're using MS SQL, whether you're using Oracle SQL or IBM or Informix or my, these are the open source, MySQL or PostgreSQL, the coding or the syntax will be almost the same. So no matter what software you're using, overall you will be writing the SQL queries only. So let us see some examples of SQL queries. Right now in this session, I'm not sure whether all of you have installed or not. From the next session onwards, your actual overall uh, MS SQL hands-on and the overall sessions will start. But in this session, uh, temporarily we will practice it online. But in reality, you have to install this software and then you have to work on it. Right? But as of now, just for this classroom, we will uh, do it online. There is a website called sqlpractice.com. Maybe if you do not have the software, maybe if your system is lacking a lot of uh, resources, then I would suggest this. But usually this is not a good idea to practice SQL online because if you are installing on your own system, you can work with your own databases. You can work with your own examples. If you are practicing online, we have very less control over it. For now, we will try to do it in this session online practice. So what we will do is I want you to go to your uh, Firefox and type sql-practice.com. That will take you to this location, sql-practice.com. Let me open it up fresh, maybe SQL practice. Even if you type SQL practice, the first link sql-practice.com, this is how it will look like initially. There will be some ads that will be running over here. You can switch off those ads if you go to settings. But first go here and observe this all of you. Stop whatever you're doing, check this. You go to settings, is there a way to disable the ads? So I can see some ads that are running over here. Is there a way to disable the ads? You see this option here, disable the ads. And you can also say auto run after typing. So make sure that you're giving these three options. Auto run after typing. What do you mean by auto run after typing? Somebody, can somebody explain me that? What exactly is auto run after typing? That means once we type the command, it will automatically execute or it will automatically run. Auto complete in SQL, that is fine. As we are typing, it will try to give us suggestions. Disable advertisements. And then after that, you just use the button escape. It will be showing you like this. In fact, you can switch off the right menu. You check this on the top right corner. On the top right corner, there is something called right menu. You click on it, that will go away. That will vanish. Right menu will vanish. Are you with me, everyone? So once if everything works fine, finally, you have to see auto run after typing, disable the ads, and then you click on right menu. Make sure that right menu doesn't appear. And now in this particular case study or in this particular session, we are going to work with a company's database called Northwind. Northwind is a company that they sell some products. So their database is what we are going to work with. They have a database with suppliers table, customers table, employees table, products table, shippers information, order, order details, all this. So their database looks like this. So they have categories, product, suppliers information. They have order details, customer ID, orders, employees, within employees, employee first name, last name, what is the title, city, region, etc. Within product, you have product name, supplier ID, category ID, quantity, etc., etc. And then you have this as the database. Within orders, you have all the order related details. Within shippers, you have the shipping company name, shipper ID, phone number. You have all this information, which is maintained by a company called Northwind. So imagine if we are working in Northwind, if we are offshore partners, that means sitting in India, we are working for a US based company called Northwind. And the client is asking a couple of questions. If the client asks us a question, how many orders have been placed today? We have to write an SQL query and give them that answer. If the client is asking the question, this particular product, 
how many orders have been placed on that particular product. We have to quickly write an SQL query, give them that information. From a particular state, how many orders have been placed? If that is what clients want to know, we have to quickly write an SQL query, give that. Are you with me? Am I making sense when I'm talking about all these tables and the information that we are extracting? Is it clear until here? Are you yes. with me in this yes, story? Sir. Yes, yep. sir. Yes, sir. Yep. yes, sir. So without any further delay, let us get our hands on SQL. Let us write our first query. And let me give you one mantra in SQL. I'll give you just one quick mantra and that mantra is sufficient to learn the whole SQL in one shot. And I don't want you to forget that mantra. Okay. All of you pay 100% attention. Your SQL will be over within two minutes if you know that mantra. What is the mantra of SQL? Select star from where? Say that again. Select star from where? I'm not kidding. Say that all of you. Select star Select from, from where? From where? Okay, select star from where and this is sufficient for you to learn SQL end to end. I'm not kidding. SQL is that easy. Let me show you how effective this mantra is. If you forget this, then you forgot SQL. So that is why I want you to totally, completely remember this. This is something that you have to totally by heart or memorize. Select star from where. So let me show you an example, then you can work on it. So here at the top, I have a hospital DB, North Wind DB. So right now I'm working with North Wind DB. Can you tell me what is the full form of DB? DB stands for what? DB database. 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 So I have selected Northwind database. So these are all the tables. So I have shown you these tables, right? Products, suppliers, employees, orders. So from the Northwind, whatever are the tables, these are all the tables. This is the overall uh, data from the Northwind DB. Exactly. You can see the same tables here. If you go to, let me close this one and then go to the location where we have opened SQL. So this is the one. So here you have Northwind DB. In that, you have all these tables that are given here. Okay. Now, let us start coding. So, what is the SQL mantra once again? The SQL mantra is select star from oh, where. Yes. Okay. Now, let me ask the first question. I want to know or I want to print all the columns from products. I want to print all the columns, all the information from products. So, the table name is products. So, select everything from products. So, tell me what will be the query. Select star from what is the table name? Select star from, I want to see everything that is there in the product. So select products. star from products. Do you think it's going to work? Let us see. Select star from products. And I will just select. say run. Select star from product. I see LECT select star from product. And it is giving me all the values from products. How many ever rows are there? Those many rows will be given. Everything in the products table is given to me. Select star from products. What if I want to see everything that is there in orders? What is the only change that I have to make? I want to see everything from the table orders. Select star from. If I want to see everything that is there in orders, order, select star orders. from orders. orders. Is that going to work? It is working. Star means everything. Star means what? Everything. Star is called as a regular expression that is meant for everything. Select star means select everything from orders. If I want to see everything from customers, what will be the command? If I want to print everything in the customers, Tell me, select star from customers. Select star means every column that I want to see. Every column, if you want to print, you say star. But in customers, I'm not interested in every column. If I'm interested in customer ID only. Earlier, I wrote select star because I want to see everything. But right now, I don't want to select star. I want to select customer ID only. Now tell me from customers, if I want to print customer ID only, then what will be the adjustment that I have to make here? Instead of saying select star, I would say, Select customer ID. Customer ID. Are customer you with me? ID. I think that's what logically we should be doing. Is it printing only customer ID? Yes. If I yes, say star, sir. it will print. If I say star, it will print everything. Once again, if I want to print only city from customers, I'm not interested in all the columns. If I'm interested only in city, what will I write? Instead of saying select <laughs> star, I will say select city. city. Select city from customers. Remember, SQL programming language was made to work extremely efficiently or extremely easy to understand. Are you already feeling that it's a li little easy to understand? Whatever column you want to select, you mention it. If you want to select every column, you mention star. From which table that you want to mention, that you want to fetch, you mention that table name. Are you with me, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if I want to select city from customers, I'll just write city. But remember, let's say my client has asked me to select the city. But look at this. The city is Berlin, again Mexico, again Mexico, London. So cities are repeating. 
don't you think this is not the right way to print it because the client may not want to see city twice i want only distinct cities yes i want to see from which all cities what all cities the customers are ordering but i don't want to see it twice or thrice so if i want to see distinct cities i will just add an extra command or extra word saying distinct select distinct city what is the mistake here distinct city select distinct city from customers have you seen the difference with distinct without distinct this is without yes, distinct sir. this is with distinct now is it also easy intuitive if i want to select distinct cities i will say select distinct city from customers can somebody tell me what is the need of keeping distinct city why can't i simply keep select city from customers to get the unique values we have to city. get like if somebody asks us a question from which all cities the customers are ordering is it making sense to mention a city name two three times no sir no. so we have to mention select distinct city from the customers so you will get all the distinct city what if you want to get two columns let us suppose earlier i said star which means every column now what if i want customer id i want the contact name contact title are you with me i want customer id contact name contact title these three columns i want in that case can you make a guess what will be the expected code customer id contact name contact, contact name contact title so let me see the customer table here this is the customer table i will say customer id customer id comma contact name contact underscore name comma what is the other one contact, contact title. title contact underscore title so select customer id contact name contact title if you want three columns i think now you can you have got an idea if you want one column two column three column how many ever specific columns you want you mention their names if you want every column you mention what select star every column select a particular column select the columns that you want you mention them are you with me yes now, yes sir now imagine in the result when i am sending this to client i don't want this to be appearing as a contact name customer id is fine but to when i am sending this output to the client instead of contact name i want to be given as customer name so this contact name should be given as customer name and then this contact title should be given as designation or customer job okay so this should be customer id customer name customer underscore job it should be like that i want to get the output with those names i want to get the output with some kind of alias i want to get customer id as it is but contact name i want to get it as customer name contact title i want to get it as customer underscore job so how do i do that i will leave customer id as it is i will say contact name as you just need to put as customer underscore name and then contact title as i would say customer underscore job so once you say as automatically whatever you are giving this is known as alias the original name is contact underscore name but the alias that you gave is customer underscore name the original column is contact underscore title the alias that you gave is customer underscore job from the table of customers i am here today to somehow prove it to you that sql is damn easy to learn even somebody has never touched any programming language earlier even if you are from non technical background even you have never touched sql any earlier even if you have touched not touched any of the programming or coding language earlier you must find sql damn easy the reason is it has been created in the mind that you it should sound almost like english language somehow we have to break the barrier that maybe coding i may not be able to learn i hear this term very frequently that i'm from non technical background i may not learn coding it is not true sir yeah hello yeah sir every time we have to click on run button or is there any shortcut key in your keyboard that we can tap you can use control enter that is also fine or we can go to settings what i have done is auto run after typing that means i will not even select anything i will not even click on run i just uh, go to settings i'll say auto run after typing as soon as i type that will be submitted that is also fine okay sir yeah. thank you sir when we are actually working on the actual classroom we will be working on local softwares and we will be working with our local databases right now this is a kind of demo only for quickly checking how sql works we are checking it here but in reality you will not be working on this yeah. Are you with me, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Are you comfortable yes, until here? Whatever we have discussed. 
ఫ్రమ్స్టమర్స్ now that is what i will get from all the customers this is the data from all the customers what if i want to get the data with a condition let us suppose there is a city column and i want to get only data from london so i want to get all the customer details where the city must be london and everything else i want to ignore it i want to put a filter condition so i want to get the data but with a filter condition in that case how do i do it so all that i need to do is just add one filter condition i would say where can you help me here where what is the column name city is equal to city, city. city is equal to and column. it has to be exactly the way that it is written in the actual data let us suppose if the data contains london with l capital then it has to be london with l capital if it is l lower case if you give then it will try to check is there anything like london it will say that no there is nothing like lower case l then you will say london and then everything that is related to london it will be giving here so select star from customers should fetch every detail of all the customers from the customers table but when you say where city equal to london it will give you from this city of london so if i say select star from customers where city is london it will give you everything from london and can i give two three conditions can i give multiple conditions yes we can in fact we are going to see all those examples we are going to make it much more complicated but what i'm giving you right now is the basic layer of sql where afterwards you will feel very comfortable after learning this are you with me yes. let us yes. suppose yes. i have this yes. products table select star from products select star from products and there is a column called unit price earlier it was a filter condition on a particular string column london is a string now if i want to do it on a numeric column let us suppose i want to select all the products where unit price is above 100 i want to select all the products where unit price is above 100 so tell me help me with that condition have you understood the question the question is the client is asking us you give me all the products where unit price is above 100 so if i write select star from products everything will be printed i have to attach one more where condition to it tell me tell me star select star from products where where, where? unit price where? 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 Unit, unit price is greater than 100 100 is that working if i say yes. unit yes. price greater than yes, 50 sir. is that working if i say unit price less than 10 are you getting a hang of how this where condition works? Yes, sir. Yes. yes what sir. if I want to do the opposite of it? Let us suppose I have select star from customers. Select star from customers. Let us suppose there is a column called country. Let us suppose if I write if I write where country is equal to Germany. If I write where country equal to Germany, everything from Germany will be selected. But what if I want to do the opposite of it? I want each and every country except Germany. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? I want all the details of all the customers. The only country that I want to ignore is Germany. So select star from customers where country is Germany will fetch you all the Germany details. Select star from customers where not country. So basically, if you say where, it will act as the condition. If you want to do the opposite of it, everything except Germany, then you have to add this additional command saying where not select start from customers where not country equal to germany then you will get everything except the germany are you with me earlier we have written a command unit price greater than 100 if i want to get everything less than 100 i can write unit price less than 100 or i can say where not unit price greater than 100 usually we don't do such things there because in mathematics you have greater than which is opposite less than but here there is nothing like uh, you have germany everything apart from germany you have to put where not is it possible to give two conditions? Let us suppose I would say where country is Germany. Now look at this. This is the data of all the customers from Germany. Now what if I want the country to be Germany and the city has to be Berlin. I want all the details of the customers from country Germany as well as city is Berlin. Can you help me with that? I have two where conditions. What are the conditions? Select star from customers where country is Germany. That is fine. And what is the other condition? city is berlin so what should i write here and city is equal to berlin 
select star from customers where country equal to Germany and city equal to Berlin. This is the condition. Let us suppose if I want to write another condition. Let's say select star from customers where city is Germany, where city uh, the country is Germany and city is equal to, let's say, this particular one or any other city. You just write that second condition. So earlier I wrote that country is Germany and city is equal to Berlin. You can write multiple conditions depending on whatever is your requirement. Once again, this whole effort is just to understand the fact that writing SQL queries is pretty easy, but you have to get into that zone. What is that zone? You have to understand that structure. First, you have like mentally, you should not see this as a, you know, some kind of code select and then star from customers where country equal to and then and if you read it like that it does it sounds very very difficult if you come from the overall structure saying that select star from customer selects everything then i'm adding two filter conditions that's it now you can also add or condition that means i want people from either germany or some other condition contact title is let's say sales representative so there are some sales representatives from germany outside germany as well so i would say this is the one contact underscore title now this is a person who is from Germany as well as he is a sales representative. There are four such customers. If I put an or condition, what does that mean? Either the person is from Germany, either that condition is met or if the person is having contact title as sales representative, both of them will be gathered. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Sometimes the condition yeah. is either condition one has to be met or the condition two has to be met. In both the cases, we want to get the result. So and condition means both of them should be matching. That means country has to be Germany, contact, title has to be sales representative. But if I say or condition, any one of those two conditions, either country is Germany or contact title is sales representative, one of them will be giving is this the answer. Maybe there are complex codes in this, maybe little complications of this. There are 20 where conditions or 30 where conditions. But once you understand overall where condition, how it is working, how much ever complex the code is related to where condition, you should be able to easily understand that. Once you understand that whole framework, are you with me, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me show you a little bit more of where condition because uh, when you are working on real data sets, most of the times uh, a client will be giving you a requirement saying, you know, this is what the condition that you have to uh, type in, and these are all the details of that condition. So there is a very high chance that you will be working with these where conditions. This is called as filtering. Is it sounding like somewhat filtering the data? You have a very large data set and you are filtering it to get a particular pass piece of the data? Yes. Sir. Yeah, yes, data yes, filtering. Sir. So yes, can sir. you say in an interview, if somebody asks you what is the skill set that you have or what are some in some of the projects that you worked on, what was the data manipulation that you have done? You have to say that, you know, I used to work with very large data sets. The raw data sets were very large and we used to use SQL query to filter the data to fetch the actual data or the final data that we are looking for. Let us suppose if you write only one condition where country equal to Germany, then you will get from Germany. But what if I want to get it from Germany as well as UK? If I say select star from customers, I have Germany country, I have UK country. What if I want where country is in Germany or UK? If that is the case, you have to write like this, where country, country, now, earlier, if it is only Germany, then we wish used to say that country equal to Germany. But if I say country in, you can give any number, let's say Germany. So this is one country and it has to be exactly the way it has been uh, mentioned in the data or UK. So if the country in Germany, UK means it will get Germany as well as UK. If you want to add one more country, all that you need to do is where country in Germany, UK, Australia, whatever is the condition. Let me just delete this. Let me see what are the other countries, Germany, UK, Mexico, France, Spain. Let us suppose I want to add Spain as well. Then I would say where country is in Germany, UK, Spain. Now three country information will come. You can add any number of countries. Usually what happens is the raw data contains a lot of information and your client is asking you to give the information about a particular city, particular country, particular region. In those cases, you are going to add these where conditions, where condition, where not condition like that. Are you comfortable until here, all of you? Are you feeling at home? Yes, Is it sounding yes, familiar sir. to yes, you, sir. all this SQL? Later on, when you are going through the video, can you quickly recollect all this? Can you quickly practice all this? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you think in the original companies they will be coming online like this and writing the SQL code? Does it happen like that in the original companies when you join a job? No, 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 no sir. It doesn't happen like no, that. Sir. In the actual companies, there will be a database software installed on your system, SQL Server. You will be writing the code there. So we will be soon installing. I think some of you have already installed, or everybody have you installed SQL Server on your system? Yes, yes sir. You must uh, install it, and then there will be a lot of other complex codes that you will be writing. But why am I taking this kind of pre-SQL session? This is like a kind of demo SQL session that I'm taking just to prepare you for that SQL. Sometimes people are saying that this coding is difficult for me or SQL is some with that mindset. If we come, everything will look difficult to us. Okay. SQL is one of the easiest one. Now look at this. I will say select star from products. Select star from products. Now these are all the products. But what I want to do is I want to order it by unit price. I want to have the least unit price in the beginning and the highest unit price in the ending. Right now it is 18, 19, 10, like scattered. Like, is it a, a kind of requirement? Sometimes I want to see the ordered data. I want to see the highest one first, least one at the end, or least one first, highest one at the end. If you want to order it by unit price, can you make a guess what is the only thing that you need to do? Select star from products and mention like, just like English language, you have to tell this to SQL. I want to order it by unit price. Give it a try. Even though you do not know the syntax for it, just give it a try. I want to order it by unit price. What should I write? Select star from products. Order by. Order by is the command. Order by. And what should I write? Select star from products. Order by. Unit price. Unit, unit price. Score price. Order by unit price. 2.5, 4.5, 6, etc., etc. Slowly it increases and reaches 263, which is the largest number. So by default, it ascending. is ordering ascending. Can I do the opposite? Can I somehow request it to make it descending? For me to ask yes. it for making it descending, I have to give one more command, isn't it? If I give DESC descending, then it will try to do that descending. Again, if you look at this as a single command, as some kind of coding, it'll be difficult. Select star from product order by unit by DESC. It'll not look good. You have to see select star from product gives me the full data. When I say order by unit price, it will give me the data of unit price ascending. And if I want it to be descending, I will put DESC. Then you will get the final output. Are you with me, everyone? Yes. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. Now, what if I want to know I don't want to print the whole data. I'm not interested in printing the whole data, but I just want to know some summary statistics. Let us suppose if I say select star from orders, I will get all the order related data. Okay. But what I want is I don't want to print all of them. Select star from orders will print all the orders. Here, I don't want to print all the orders. I just want to know how many rows are there. I just want to print the number of rows. If you say select star from orders will print all the rows, all the columns. But if I want to print only the count of rows, are you getting what is the count of rows? Here it shows that there are 830 results. That means there must be 830 rows. But if I want to print only 830 in the output window, so this is the output window that you see where the table is printed. What if I want to print only that 830, the count of rows? If you say select star, it will print all the rows. If you want to print only count of the rows, can you make a guess what is the command that I have to change? Select, instead of saying select star, I will say select count star. Select count star will count all the rows and give you the output. Select count star. What is that count star? What does that 830 mean? Tell me, what is this output? 830. What is the meaning of this 830? Select count star. Star means all the rows. Count of all the rows. Yeah. How many rows are there in orders table? How many rows are there? 830. If somebody asks you how many rows are there in employees table, can you give the answer? How do you write it? Select count star from employees. How many rows are there in employees table? Nine. Nine. Select star from orders will give us all the rows. But if you say select count star, it will give you the count. Are you with me? Now let us suppose yes. if I say select count star, it will give me the count. What if I say select star, it will give me everything. Like freight is like some kind of sales. Like usually in the shipping uh, overall terminology, freight means the bulk orders. So let us call this as sales. So this is the sales or the total sales. This is the sales amount or the weight of the overall products that we have sent. If I want to know the sum of all the sales or sum of right. So what I would say, I will say select sum of whatever is the column name. F-R-I-E. What exactly is the column name? Let me check. I'll go to orders here. F-R-I. 
E G H T. This is the column. So what is this? If you take a particular column, if you do the whole summation of it, whatever is the amount that you get. So in the select fright, if I simply say select fright from orders, it will print me everything. If I don't want to print everything, if I want a summation of it, I will say sum of all the values. Then I will get the overall sum. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. What if I want to get the average? There must be a command for average as well. So I will say AVG is the command. AVG. Average fright is this much. Summation is this much. That's it. These are all the summary values rather than printing the whole values. Until now, we printed large, large tables. But now I am printing the summaries of them. What if I want to get these summaries by certain groups? Earlier, I have seen the summation of right or summation of, let me call that as sales. Earlier, I have seen the total sales. But what if I want the sales by ship city? City by sales is what I want. For example, there is a column. Let's say if I see select star from orders. So there is something called shipping city or shipping country. Now, earlier I have done the summation for the whole table. But what if city-wise summation I want or country-wise? Like what is the fright in Brazil? What is the fright in Germany? What is the fright in France? Country-wise, if I want, then I have to first group by that country. So here is the overall code for it. I will write select. First, I have to write ship country. So you can see the column name here, ship underscore country. Ship country, a comma. For every country, I want to get the value of summation of right. You can call that summation of right as the overall uh, sales from which table? Orders table. Again, you have to add one extra command here. Group by, you have to say group by ship underscore country. If you say group by ship underscore country, this is the country one and you're getting shipping country printed. You're also getting fright, summation of fright printed. Earlier, if you just simple summation of fright, you used to get a, a simple overall sum, but now you're getting ship by country as well as fright. Now, these kind of uh, group by statistics, will you will be able to understand only when you complete Excel pivot tables. So in Excel, a lot of people uh, kind of ignore Excel because when we say I'm teaching you Excel, people think that I already know Excel. But if I ask them the questions in pivot tables, advanced pivot tables, power pivots, if we ask about these kind of twisted questions where in the actual business, these kind of uh, advanced Excel related formulas, advanced Excel related cross tables need to be used, there people will falter. So if you want to understand SQL really in depth, you also need to be good at Excel. So somebody who is feeling that I don't really need Excel, you have to change your opinion, make sure that you complete all the assignments in Excel, then your life will be damn easy in SQL. Then automatically your life will be damn easy in Python. Automatically it will be damn easy in machine learning and all the other tools, okay? So start with Excel, that is the easiest way to get into this whole space of data science. That is what the whole world is missing. When people say data science, they directly jump onto the real stuff and that is totally overwhelming. It will be very difficult to understand. So here, what I'm trying to do, I want to get the ship country and summation of freight in each ship country. For that, I have to group by ship country. First, I'll group by, and in each group, I'm getting the output. Now, if I want to do group by as well as order by, that means right now, I'm getting summation of freight, like for this is 598, this is like 7391, this is 1280, this is 4880. What if I want to order by? this summation of fright, if I want to order it, let me call this as summation of fright as total sales. In simple terms, I want to call it as total sales. So it will be printed as total sales. What if I want to order by total sales? Can you tell me what is the extra command that I have to add here? What is the extra command that I have to add here? Order, order by. You simply say, Hi. that's a good intuition, order by. What is the column name that I have to give here, order by? Total sales. Total underscore total sales. sales. Is that going to work? Let us see. Is it working? 175, 275? Yep. Yes. Making sense? Yes, it's increasing. Sir. What if I want to do the opposite? Descending, if I want to do it, the only thing that you're going to do is what? DSC. DSC. Now you're on the zone. We are in the zone, isn't it? Because later on, if I ask you a question, what if I want it uh, from a particular country only, then you'll put a wear condition, isn't it? What if I want the ship country to yes. be only USA? What if the ship country has to be USA, Germany, Austria? Then you'll put the wear condition. So select, star, from where, group by, order by, where. When you see them for the first time in the whole Unigen, the whole query may look really complex, but when you learn in a structured manner, everything looks so clear.
Are you with me, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is this particular session that we are discussing here is a, a quick SQL kind of starter session. You may not be really practicing all this in this sqlpractice.com like this online. You will be installing SQL server on your local systems. So what I want to tell you is first complete SQL uh, Excel classes. Make sure that you complete Excel assignments. Then you will find it extremely easy to follow SQL. And then once you complete SQL, then the rest of the topics will be pretty easy for you to follow. Especially those who say that I'm from non-technical background, pay extra attention in SQL, you will suddenly feel that you know coding is damn easy. Just that in our life, we did not get a chance to work on coding. That is why we may feel a little hesitant, but once you complete SQL, you can tell yourself that you know what, anybody can do coding, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is it with a quick demo on SQL. This is just to give you or boost you some confidence. Did I really succeed in doing it or did I scare you? Overall, are you feeling confident to get started with SQL formally? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfect then.